everybody, I'm Bart Connor, and we're glad you've joined us here for this SEC gymnastics action between Alabama, the reigning national champions, and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now, tonight, there's more at stake than just the win-loss record, because beginning next week, all the national teams will be ranked by their RQS, their regional qualifying scoring ranking. Let's take a look at how that's calculated. The RQS is based on a team's six best regular season meet scores, of which three must be away. To obtain the RQS ranking, the high score is eliminated, and the remaining five scores are averaged. The RQS ranking will determine which teams get the highest seeds going into the NCAA regional qualifiers. And I'm proud, as always, to be joined by my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson-Clark. And so tonight, we're not only going to see a great matchup, but there's really a competition within a competition going on. And it's an important one. Arkansas, as you mentioned, they have to count three road scores, and they have one low one that they really want to drop. So it's a great opportunity for them to get a big road score to raise that regional qualifying score and their ranking. And what better place to do it? Right. You go to the defending national <laughs> champions home gym, sellout crowd. Right where Alabama needs a huge home meet to raise their RQS and raise their ranking. Now let's talk about Arkansas. They were a preseason number 11, then they were ranked number one early in the season. Where are they right now? Okay, Arkansas came out strong. <laughs> they were a little bit flat in their last competition, kind of out of sync. They didn't get to do their intra-squad leading up to that competition. Now they feel like they're back on track, they're rested. And this is going to be a great opportunity for them to get back that consistency that they need. They rely very heavily on their three all-arounders, two in particular. Jamie Passani, who's a great all-around gymnast. She finished seventh in the all-around at the NCAAs last year. Very athletic gymnast, along with her teammate, Catherine Grable, who is extremely athletic as well, especially on the vault and on the balance beam. And they get to start on their very best event, so they'll get off to a bang. On the uneven bars. Now, for Alabama, of course, they're one of the deepest teams in the country. They have a dynamic duo as well. Well, they absolutely do. You've got uh, Gerilyn Stack Eaton and Ashley Priest, and Ashley Priest is a wonderful story. Yeah. She missed her entire senior season with two bad ankles, had to sit on the sideline while her team won a national championship, and she is back in the lineup. She has the top average on both the bars and the balance beam, so it's just a fantastic uh, story. Gerilyn Stack Eaton right. now has had kind of an up and down. They've been easing her into competition because they really want her to peak at the end of the season. She is so important to this team she suffered a concussion so now she's back in the all-around and along with Ashley Priest they really lead this very strong very unified team we have two of the best teams in the country coming up next here on ESPN remember Arkansas starts on the bars Alabama on the vault where they have in fact scored two perfect tens already this season it's gonna be great don't go away That's warming up on the vault. Arkansas warming up on the bars where these two teams are spectacular. And earlier this year, Alabama has already banked two scores of perfect 10, and we're not even at the midway point in the season. Looking back, this was an outstanding vault. Watch the landing here. You cannot be any more perfect on a landing. Sherilyn Stack Keaton had her 10. And then Deandra Milliner banked one for the Crimson Tide as well against Huge, Florida. Huge, gigantic vault. What? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's gorgeous. All right. Getting set for the first vaulter for the Crimson Tide. You talk about a quality team. This young lady... Kayla Williams is the leadoff vaulter, and she is a former world champion on this event. Would you like to have a world champion leading off your event? Now, this is an outstanding event for Alabama. They can compete lights out here. If they come up with stuck landings, this score will be outrageous. Kayla Williams, her score, season high score, 9.85. She's just a freshman out of Huntington, West Virginia, did her club gymnastics at Cincinnati Gymnastic Academy. Well, one of the things you really have to learn how to do in collegiate gymnastics is focus. There's so much enthusiasm and excitement in the air. Leading off with a stop. could be the difference in a great event for them and an unbelievable
simple one for them. Fighting for the landing, kept those feet glued to the mat. Could have been a little bit higher, but boy, what a start. And start off for Arkansas on the bars, ranked number two in the nation as a team. This is Jordan Salzberg, one of the unsung heroes. You mentioned the top two all around at the top of the show, but she really completes that trifecta of three great balanced gymnasts. And I tell you what, it's so important for every single member to do their part, come together, truly become greater than the sum of your parts. There's so much distraction in here, but a good solid routine to begin with for Arkansas. They are really looking at landings and handstands on bars. They must hit these two elements to score big. Salzburg's high was a 9.85 there. Let's go back to the vault now. Caitlin Clark, the freshman out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. According to Sarah Patterson, the head coach at Alabama, she could really be a difference maker for the team going down the road. She missed her first meet but hit the next four. Sarah really likes to ease in her young gymnast, the freshman and sophomore, into the lineup. Score for Williams was a 9-8-7-5 to lead him off. Wow! Oh. Wow! Boy, you can see what out they're out after here. Very solid balance between the height and the distance. Could have been a little bit farther away from the horse. But these judges are looking at those landings, and when you can't take a deduction... Stephanie Canizzaro will be up next for Arkansas in this event where they excel. 9-7-7-5 was the score for Salzburg in their opening performance. This actually looks much better than the 30-second warm-up. Cleaner, tighter, beautiful combination here. The half pirouette and then into the turn reverse hack was just gorgeous. Very nicely done. Little hop on the landing. Those are the kind of things you really can't give up in a competition like that. Very nice combination. Good to see this variety. Unfortunately, she gave up a little bit right here. Slung that double layout out. And Back to, to the ball quickly. This is crazy. Ashley Sledge. Boy, that's a pretty vault. A <laughs> little bit of a pike in that position and a tiny hop. Talk about a great start for Alabama. Kayla Williams and Caitlin Clark all have career highs in their first performances. It just really emphasizes how important those lead-off gymnasts are. Look at the enthusiasm, the momentum they can build. Catherine Grable getting set for Arkansas on the bars. And you talked about her at the top of the show. She is a really balanced gymnast, such an athlete, and so intense as a competitor, isn't she? Yes. Mark Cook, right there, giving her last minute instructions. Such a fine coach. He has done an outstanding job with this program, celebrating their 10th year. She's for a her teammate, bit. Stephanie Canizzaro, 975. Excuse me, Kathy. She was a little bit tight going for that handstand. That was a nice transition to the low bar. Needs a stick here. Oh, a little over rotation. Mark Cook mentioned to us before the competition they really want to stick some landings here tonight because they want to try to get a big 197 score, they don't they? They need a big road score here. Marissa Gutierrez now the junior out of Houston, Texas for Alabama. Score for Ashley Sledge was a 9-8-7-5. What a terrific gymnast to have on your squad. Oh, took the step. That was actually a bigger ball. More height, and look at the distance from the table. Lifts up, very beautiful amplitude on that. The only thing was that step to the right. Coach Sarah Patterson said she's really a key to the team because we know a lot of the stars, but Gutierrez is outstanding on at least three events, and you often talk about the middle of the lineup as the difference maker for a quality team. Absolutely. She's your bread and butter. Right. This is what you need on a championship team. Catherine Grable had a 9-8-2-5 as we go to another one of their stars.
Jamie Fasani. One thing I'd love to see from Jamie is just a little more attention to the detail. The toes need to really stay pointed. Fasani ranks seventh in the country on this event. 11th in the all around. Given a little bit away in form deductions and not quite on the handstand, but what a gorgeous dismount. Don't just in double back, she nailed that. Both teams off to a strong start here in the first rotation. Keep in mind, these two teams are ranked second in the country on these events. These are two of their best events right off the start. Here's Stack Eaton. She scored a oh. 10 earlier this year. This is a gymnast can, that can come up with a stuck landing when she needs oh. it. That's a beautiful vault in the air. I love the fact that her toes stay pointed throughout <laughs> the entire thing. Really balances everything. There's an elegance to this vault. And just a very, very pretty landing. Look at this. Arms go up. She just floats from the ceiling on the eight-time All-American. Legs perfectly together. Nice. On the bars for Arkansas, Shelby Salmon. Back to the bars for Arkansas, Jamie Fasani on 9-8-5. Shelby Salmon. when she released that bar. It was just missed time. Took her out away from the bar. Oh. Keep in mind, you can drop one low score, and of course, this is the one they're going to want to drop. We talked about the most important thing for Arkansas is getting a strong away score on their best event. They have to be spectacular. Solid double layout going to put a little extra pressure on the final performer, Araya Houdeshell, who is awesome. Back to the vault now, Deandra Milliner. She's the other athlete from Crimson Tide that scored a 10 this year. Geraldine Stack Eaton had a 9.95. Oh, where do you see this go? What did it have to oh. oh, shoot! Couldn't quite get the landing, but it's so nice in the air. Much more difficult than any of the vaults we've seen. One and a half twist. She nailed some in warm-ups, but couldn't quite get the landing on this one. What's amazing about her, not only does she have the power, but great technique as well. Great technique and unbelievable spatial awareness. She really knows where she is with that blind landing. Sixth impressive vault for the Crimson Tide in their first rotation. A little extra pressure on Mariah Howdeshell now from Arkansas on the bars. This is where she's a specialist. Ranked fourth in the country on this event. She's, she's beautiful on this event. And she's a gymnast who can handle the kind of pressure that she's feeling right now. This is her job. Her season and career high is a 9.925. By the way, back over on the vault, the score for Milliner was a 9.925 as well. Shell has scored 9925 three times this year so far. What you're going to really like in this routine, she has some big elements, nice variety of skills, long, gorgeous swing. The score for Shelby Selman, 8.75. Needless to say, that will be the low score drop, assuming that Mariah Houdeshell outscores that. Watch for these handstands. Make sure she's in the vertical position on any of the pirouettes, hit those handstands, impress the judges. That is just out of this world. I love that really smooth. It's huge. Here comes another one. She has the best form of the team, the best routine in terms of difficulty, hitting her handstands. If she can come up with a stuck landing, this is a big one. And they need it. Shoot, that's too bad because the routine was gorgeous. 
Notice how far she went out. She really just slung this dismount out. Look at the gorgeous height on that release move. She maintains the form throughout. Wow. And so smooth. Unfortunately, she kind of pinged this one, slung it out, and had to take that step forward. We call it pinging because yes. when you let go of the bar, it goes ping. ping. All right, that was an exciting first rotation for two of the best teams in the country. We'll be back with their scores in competition in the second rotation right away. Don't go away. The scores after the first of four rotations. The Crimson Tide, just 75,000 of a point off their season high on the ball with a 49.525, has a solid lead over the Razorbacks from Arkansas, who stumbled a little bit on their first event, the Bars. Let's take a look at the rankings based on average scores. Now, it's Utah, Florida, Oklahoma, Georgia, and so on. But on the right, you notice that's the RQS that takes effect at the end of this weekend after every team has done at least six meets, three of them away. So the rankings will be different as of Tuesday. And both teams here are looking for not only a win, but a chance to improve their RQS score to give them the best chance of qualifying to the national championship. And Arkansas score, so score could be really different if they, oh no. Big deduction on that landing. Unfortunately, just short on the rotation. First ball to for Arkansas was Kelsey Lewis, the junior. Typically a solid contributor on vault and floor. Caitlin Clark now. We saw her on vault in the first rotation. On the bars now for Alabama. And Bart, this is probably Alabama's weakest event, just in terms of their consistency and what they've done so far in competition. Ranked 10th in the country on this event, their lowest rank of all four apparatus. Solid routine, best part of the routine was that dismount. Very nice height on the double layout. We talked to Sarah Patterson early, said, what's wrong with bars? And she said, well, we just need to start hitting like we do in practice. Exactly, it's so easy to get tight on the uneven bars and hold back, which you can't do if you've got to hit those handstands perfectly. Well, that step back for Kelsey Lewis for Arkansas, the first vaulter, 9675. Not what they wanted to lead off that rotation. Arkansas, Stephanie Canizaro. Stephanie Canizaro will be the next ball for the freshman from Nesbitt, Mississippi. Need to kind of restart their engine here. They switched their lineup just before the competition. I wonder what they're doing. That's the kind of landing you really needed off the bat. A little bit stronger vault. We've seen higher vaults so far from Alabama. You can see it's almost like rotating into the map, but boy, she came up with a great landing. Renee right. Cook, happy Renee with that. Cook, <laughs> the co-head coach at Arkansas, happy with uh, the performance there on vault. Kind of Zara, back to the bars now. Becca Alexin, she specializes on this event. Oh. Caitlin Clark had a 9-8 in their first performance. Oh, she's a little bit off. Her 30-second warm-up, final touch warm-up was not real solid. Just a little shaking. Mm. Oh, oh, my goodness. And not a good landing. They're rattled a little. They need to calm down. And she was five for five this year. She has the third highest average for the team on bars. Yeah, her warm-up was rough, and that is not, not characteristic of the routine we've seen from her. Stephanie Canizaro had a 9.775 for Arkansas, so their first two scores, 9.675 and 9.775. That brings up Scarlett Williams, the sophomore from Baton Rouge. Her season high on this event is a 9.8. Typically, she does vault and balance beat for the Razorbacks. Oh, very nicely done. Good distance from the table. I think I would have liked to have seen a little bit more rise. Actually, no, pretty, pretty decent height as well. It's a tough ball to land, isn't it? Very difficult ball to land. She does it extremely well. Flipping forward is always more difficult to land because you don't really see the floor until your feet are on it. You Sarah DeMeo will be next. The score for Becca Alexson, unfortunately, a 9.625. Now, Sarah has struggled a little bit this season with consistency, confidence. They're really working on 
getting her confidence back up, getting her mentally tight. So far, hitting nice handstands here. Solid work. Trying to help her become a little more confident in her recovery from surgery after last season. But she was third on bars at the NCAAs last year. Very good routine. Nice position in that double layout. And from a gorgeous landing. That's definitely the kind of routine you need at this point in the lineup. And she fought to keep those feet solidly planted into the ground. Very nice. She missed three of five meets this year on bars so far. So that was a clutch performance when they really needed a good score. Back to Jordan Salzburg now for Arkansas. Solid all-around competitor and a great landing. That's what Arkansas needs here. They need to start turning it around and getting these stuck landings. Start doing a little bigger gymnastics, not so tight. Score for her teammate, Scarlett Williams, was a 9.875. Nice looking ball. And Mark Cook is happy. <laughs> <laughs> to the bars. DeMayo had a 9.85. Ashley Sledge, this could be a highlight, Kathy. Absolutely. Now, normally, she has been leading off for Alabama on this event and has been a great leadoff performer, so it's an interesting strategy change. Oh, beautiful handstand. Now, watch this. There, I don't know if I've ever seen a higher double layout off the bars. She cranks these giants way up in here. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. Coach Patterson said this is the gymnast who's developed the most over the last three years. Look at how high her hips are when mm. she finishes the second somersault. She's almost the level of the high bar and just drops it in from the sky. Back to vault now, Arkansas. The last two vaults are Scarlett Williams and Jordan Salzburg, both career highs. Now Jamie Fasani. Oh! Oh! At first I thought she was a little high on the table. She but drilled she, it. She really did. The vault we see so often in collegiate gymnastics managed to get a push off of the table, and the best part was the landing. The teammate had a 9-9, Jordan Salzburg, so setting up Pisani and Graber, the last two performers, for big scores there. Once again, each team puts up six athletes on the team, five of the best scores count towards the team total. So you can drop one score if you have a low score or a mistake, but you need five really strong scores. This is such an easy routine to enjoy. She's so smooth, very, very nice technique, and her form is so nice. Ashley Sledge had a 9.85 before her. Very impressed with this gymnast. She hasn't had as much training. The numbers, they're really holding her back early in the season to make sure they pace her properly to be strong at the end. She is so important to this team. Then she suffered the concussion, was out of that competition. But look at this, coming in solidly for them. Back to vault now, the final vault. So Jamie Pisani had a 9.925. Here's Catherine Grable. This could be huge. Oh, beautiful vault. Look at the distance on that. And it's a unique vault. We don't typically see it in collegiate gymnastics. Watch this. Uh, half on out of the round off. Half on, front pike, half out. Gorgeous. Her head was above the level of the table. And man, she landed in Birmingham. Look at how far she is from the bluffing <laughs> table. Oh, that's fantastic. Good job. Alabama's final competitor on the boards is Ashley Priest. Great second <laughs> rotation for the Razorbacks there in the vault. Back now to Ashley Priest. Score for Gerilyn Stack Eaton, a 9 9. Ashley has been so consistent on this event. She has gorgeous form, technique, nice level of difficulty, big release move, and back to back. That reverse heck and then down to the pack salto, nice combination. Go by the way for Catherine Grable back over in the vault was a 9.925 for Arkansas. This is getting closer. Now it's the competition I expected. Slide up. 
out just a little bit, but that's a veteran. Yeah, she, she was able to find the floor. She found the floor. What a great story, Ashley Priest, coming back from major injuries. and She's on a mission. Right. It's nice to see her. All right, we'll get you caught up on the scores at the second of four rotations. Exciting gymnastics here in the SEC. Don't go away. I'm Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson-Clark. We'll be back in a minute. Here are the standings at the halfway point. Alabama with a lead of just under a half a point over Arkansas. Alabama, of course, coming up on the balance beam next, and that usually is the make-or-break event in women's collegiate gymnastics. Let's take a look at the undefeated Crimson Tide, 7-0, 4-0 in the SEC. Their top score of the year in 197-725. That was against Florida. They have impressive challenges coming up, probably the most difficult non-conference foe will be the Oklahoma Sooners coming up in a couple of weeks who are ranked third in the country. First up now for Alabama on the beam is Deandra Milliner. It's interesting, Bart, they are still playing around with the lineup, moving gymnasts around, getting them experience, but also trying to find that magical combination, what works best to unify this team, get the chemistry working, as the championship season approaches, they're a little past the midway point. Coaches really want to start seeing consistency, not just with each gymnast, but in the lineup, how it builds and keeping that momentum going. It seems to be working for Alabama. Their score on the bars, 49-3, was their season high this year, so they're starting to click there. Yes, they were very impressive on bars. I was very pleasantly surprised, actually, to see such a jump in their level on that event. So it's a great job. DeAndre was the second team All-American on this event. We've seen her power on vault. Nice dismount, double twist, and a good landing. Boy, she's got him off to a very good start. Man, did she plant her feet? It was like landing in a bucket of wet cement. She wasn't going anywhere. It's just the one thing that you, you, you can't give up because it's such an obvious deduction, and the judges will take it. To the floor now. Bailey Zumwald from Arkansas. A sophomore from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Season and career high on this event, 9.85. Well, this is a strong event for Arkansas. They had a lot of difficulty in their tumbling runs, and they started the season really well, throwing all of their hard stuff. Ranked eighth in the country on this event, national. The team landed with her chest just a little low. The judges are really looking this year for a higher landing position. Really want the chest up in a more vertical upright position. Remember the former Razorback Samantha Cortez? Well, she came back as an assistant coach this year, and she's choreographed most of the young ladies' new floor routine. Nice performance. Not the big, huge tumbling classes that we'll see later on, but pretty clean. Watch where her chest is, though, as she lands this. But it's a nice combination, a whip to a pike double back. Much more difficult. The beam now for Arkansas, Kim Jacob. Score for DeAndre Milliner, and that leadoff spot was a very strong 9.825. We often see Kim Jacob lead off on right. this event. But again, playing around with the chemistry here. So far, she's five for five this year in beam routines. I hate to say it, I don't want to jinx her. But she has been... Hard to jinx somebody this solid. 
I like the fact that she is up on her toes. I see a, a quality there that sometimes is missing on balance beam, and I really think judges need to pay more attention to that. Really give credit to those who are very extended, very stretched on the beam, and then high up on the toes. Coach Sarah Patterson said Kim Jacob is what every coach wants. She has that work ethic. She has that great spirit and that great attitude day in and day out. And that was a nice skill yeah. toward the end of the bout routine. Finishes with the double twist and oh, great good. landing. Even better. We could be looking at a huge score. First performer, remember, Milliner had a 9 8 2 5. Yeah, I really like this gymnast. Very clean lines. Fights for everything. Simwald had a 9-7-7-5. So that brings up Stephanie Canizaro. Canizaro had a 9-7-7-5 on vault. And a 9-7-5 on bar. It's a missed element. Boy, it's, it's tough. I really like the expressiveness of her dance and the movement of her arms. Just not a strong tummy. It really has to work to get the rotation around. I'm not sure what happened on the first one. Her legs just almost buckled. It was low, but still, I was expecting her to pull out the landing. You wonder if some of this is mid-season doldrums. It's hard to stay deep throughout the whole year, isn't it? Mark said they were tired, they were flat in the last competition. He was hoping that adjustments in training had given them a little bit of rest time. You're right, she has good technique, so it, it's likely it's just lack of power at this point. Perhaps they're just a little fatigued. I think you're right, Bart. I mean, she's not a powerful tumbler, but I think she could have pulled this landing out. It almost just surprised her, got her hips behind her, and her legs just sort of buckled underneath. To the beam now. Alyssa Gutierrez. The score for Kim Jacob, a season-high 9-9 before her. Alabama is off to an impressive start here. It's difficult not to feel that they're really on to something as they go into this event. I'm seeing a very aggressive approach to beam and really attacking the landings and yet staying very calm. Oh. Just a minor adjustment there. But keep in mind that the judges are looking for some of these elements combined in connection, receive bonus points. You can't have any break between them. The rhythm has to be nonstop. talk about how deep this team is. Sarah Patterson says we have tried to get eight to ten deep on every event so we can play with our lineup. It's a nice luxury to have. Team is ranked sixth in the country on this event. Really strong event. routine a couple little breaks in there I would have liked to have seen a little bit more split on her jumps mm -hmm. flip up layout step out minor adjustment there a good cover but definitely a deduction Jordan Salzburg score for Canizaro a low 9075 needless to say that would be the score they would hope to draw but puts additional pressure on the rest of the lineup. Just five of six scores count towards the team total. Almost went over that pink line.
Tonight is the eighth annual Power of Pink meet here in Alabama. So, as you can imagine, nearly 15,000 people in this house and all the gymnasts are wearing pink. Score for Marissa Gutierrez over on the beam for Alabama was a 9-8. Judges should really be looking at those leaps and seeing the position in the air with full split, legs up at a certain height, and really hitting those positions. And a good finish for the transfer from Southeast Missouri State University. We'll be back with more from this rotation in a minute. Back in Tuscaloosa. We're in the Coleman Coliseum. More than 15,000 people on hand tonight to see this gymnastics event. I love that. It's a great start on beams. Sarah DeMeo. We commented how she had been somewhat inconsistent on the bar. She this year has been more consistent on the balance beam, however. Well, she has a lot to draw upon. At the NCAAs last year, she came up with an amazing clutch performance on the balance beam after a senior Kayla Hoffman fell. Mm, right. But it was really an amazing moment for all of them. Uh, when, she, when Kayla walked off, she just had this sense of, of confidence in Sarah. And it just rubbed off on her. She said the exact right thing to her teammate. She came up and nailed her routine. Former three-time member of the U.S. national team. You see, generally, back legs a little low on all the loops. But I'm also seeing very good landings on dismount. So. Scores for Alabama on the beam. Sarah Patterson is happy between 9-8 for Gutierrez up to a 9-9 for Kim Jacob. Kelsey Lewis, originally out of Oklahoma, will be up for the Razorbacks on the floor now. Jordan Salzberg before her at a 9-7-7-5. Gorgeous arrayed in double front. Beautiful landing. Now we're starting to see the level of difficulty in these final three performers on the floor exercise. Her career high on this event is a 9-9. She scored that this year. Missed that layout a little bit after the one and a half. Those are tricky. Missed the timing of that punch. She was able to pull it around. Lost a little form. First one was nicely done. Arabian double front. Watch the half twist and then double front. And to land that, you just really have to be cat-like in your sense of where the floor is. Sterling Stack Eaton up on the beam for Alabama now. Now that's, that's a much better spit leap. A little bit short on the second jump to, of really showing a full 180. Her teammate DeMeo had a 9-7-7-5. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, she saved the fall. That's too bad. No, no, she's so sorry. But keep in mind, she does not have the numbers in competition yet. She hasn't competed as much as she's used to. 
this season. She actually suffered a mild concussion from a landing a few weeks ago on floor exercise where her head snapped forward and it rattled her brain enough that it caused a minor right. concussion. I've not seen that. No, in yeah, before. she actually continued warming up and then suddenly just did not feel well. They obviously took her out of the lineup. But she's the type of gymnast that can do so much with less training, and that's important to be able to do in a long season. Just that one unfortunate break after her flip-up layout. Oh, you could see her slightly off on the back handspring. She fought to keep it in line and avoided the fall. Catherine Grable will be next up for the Razorbacks. The score for Kelsey Lewis before her, a 9-8. Okay, now this gymnast has punch. She really gets off the floor. And an excellent landing on top of the difficulty. Her season and career high here, a 9.95 on the floor. Nifty pass in the middle. Coach I Mark like Cook said this is the strongest team they've ever had on the board. I like to see those combination passes in the middle pass. in their performance quality on this event. I think the choreography is better, the performance quality is better, expressive dance, and in the instance of these two last performers, great difficulty in the routine. Ashley Kreese now. Sherilyn Stack Eaton had a 9.7 after that bobble. So the low score there on Beam is a 9.7. Very nice combination. Notice how she flowed from one skill right to the next. I love the quick pace of her routine. It suits her, shows a confidence. Very nice in the air. Those are probably the best leaps and jumps I've seen so far on balance beam showing a full split. This is lovely. And a combination into the dismount. And this is smart gymnastics. She's had surgery on both ankles. Right. You need to protect those ankles so she gets her difficulty in the routine, does a simpler dismount, but does it perfectly. Ashley Priest graduated early. She's working on her master's degree in marketing. That's the first time any Alabama gymnast has graduated early. Good for her. Now, Jamie Pasani will be the final performer for the Razorbacks on floor. The score for Katherine Grable, as expected, 9-9. Nine, nine. And we're in for a treat. She's ranked number one on this event and has been there, I believe, three weeks. Right. The nine-time All-American. Watch this first pass, Bo. It's really outstanding. Check out the amplitude, the difficulty. Half in, half out. Spots the floor and lands it perfectly. Remember, they've already had a low score from Penazaro, 9.075. So this routine is big. The Razorbacks are going to keep this close. Ah! 
Back over on the beam for Alabama after the shaky 9-7 for Jerilyn Stack Eaton. Ashley Freese came up big with a 9-9-2-5. She really knows how to pull out a landing. Even if it's not gonna be exactly perfect, she somehow makes it near perfect. A lot of power, good technique, but boy, you just have to have this, that spring, that extra pop to lift it off the floor like that. That's one of the things Mark Cook said about his Razorbacks. He wanted to make sure they were exceptionally fit so they could do strong dismounts and big endurance at the end of their routine. All right, we'll be back with the standings after three of four rotations from this exciting SEC matchup. Don't go away. You felt like this before, right? Two third Connor along with Kathy Johnson Clark. Here are the standings after three of four rotations. Alabama with a lead of a little bit over half a point over the visiting Razorbacks from Arkansas. Let's take a look at the Lady Razorbacks, nine and three on the season, three and the two in the SEC. And a big home score, 197-225, was the day that they were celebrating the 10th anniversary of their young program. We'll see them throughout the rest of the year, and we'll catch them at the SEC Championships, which will be on ESPN. And hopefully, for their sake, we'll see them at the NCAA Championships as well this spring. Jordan Salzberg will be the first performer for Arkansas on the beam. Bama, by the way, had the second highest beam score this year. Jordan has been averaging just under a 9.8 on this event. Very solid. Had that break on the layout step out here. Had to settle down. Good combination, but unfortunately landed short of rotation, broke at the hips and is given out now a second balance break. Good landing on the dismount, not her best routine, but she, she did manage to stay on, save those two landings, not give up a bigger break. First performer for the Crimson Tide in their final rotation, Kim Jacob. Now if they really turn it on on this final event, this could be a sensational home score. As you can tell, it's a little easier competing at home on this event. Got a lot of crowd support. And when you're sucking wind at the end of that floor routine, it doesn't hurt that there's 15,000 people pulling for you. Yeah, at least you can't hear your breathing. <laughs> Though these floor routines are only about a minute and a half in length, it's like an all-out sprint. Oh. It really is no chance to really get caught up. It's, it's basically an anaerobic activity. It is anaerobic. The fitter you are, the more precise you can be with the technique. Come up with the good landings. Land high. Team. It doesn't have the big tumbling passes you're that right. we're going to see later in the lineup, but that's a solid routine, very well performed. Sarah Patterson said she can do a full in back out. She may do it later in the season. All right, now. Back to Arkansas on the beam. The score for 
the first performance your Jordan Salzburg in 9.6 good combination I'm salivating over her toe point. That's just the kind of thing you have to be born with. It's very, very nice extension. Great right form just a little with that trail leg on the leap. You really have to hold it straight all the way through the landing. Focus for the Razorbacks this year was really to change some composition in the routine to minimize the chance for deductions. The first performer, Salzburg, had a 9-6. We go back over now to the floor. Kim Jacob had a 9.825. This is a lineup change now. Laura Lee Frost from Decatur, Alabama, a local gymnast who grew up her whole life hoping to be a competitor on the Alabama gymnastics team. Well, her dream is coming true. Just a freshman. And here she is in front of a packed house. Double layout. She had a 9.85 in a quad meet in January, but otherwise most of her scores have been in that 9.6-ish range. So some consistency problems for her. A lot of nerves competing here in this place. Tuscaloosa, the young freshman steps up. Well, interesting technique on that roundup back handspring, but came up with a decent double layout, good difficulty in the routine, and sold it all the way through the end. Talk about freshman with an opportunity. Back over now to Sammy Kolba. She's a last minute replacement. They took Kelsey Lewis out of the lineup, and Sammy is not only a freshman, this is her first meet ever, and she's doing it on beam in front of 15,000 people at an away meet. How do you like that? Well, looks like she's liking it pretty well so far. Handling the pressure, handling her nerves, that's one of the tricky things on beam until you're actually in that position and you feel the feeling. It's hard to know how you're going to react and how you need to calm the nerves and yet use the adrenaline to your advantage to stay focused but calm. Young ladies out of Naperville, Illinois, did her club gymnastics at Arena Gymnastics. That's too long, unfortunately. I think that'll be a deduction. Concentration, she needed it. Very difficult this man, and she comes up with a great tuck double back. I think they'll take a little for a concentration pause that was a bit too long. Back to the floor now. Deandra Milner, the score for Laura Lee Frost was a 9-9. There were a lot of people in this building that wanted to see a higher score.
for the Crimson Tide. Roll Tide. We'll be back with more gymnastics after this. Back to Tuscaloosa on the beam now for the Razorbacks. Scarlett Williams. The score for Sammy Colbus in her first meet ever, a 9.7. Well done. Oh! Very interesting, there was a late minute, last minute lineup change here. They juggled the lineup all around for the Razorbacks. It does make you wonder what was going on in the warm-ups or in the coaches' minds to, to make the last-minute changes. In the original lineup, Jamie Pisani was to go now. Williams after her, they flip-flopped them. Nice dismount combination. Nice job. Unfortunately, the five tenths of a point off of the fall. This is the score they will hopefully drop. But good combination. Flip flop layout right into a one and a half twist. Nice surprise there at the end. Score for Deandra Milliner, a 9.925. Marissa Gutierrez now. Such an improved gymnast. It's great to see someone just get better and better and be such an integral part of a successful team. Oh, just double layout. Very nice. Last couple of seasons, we've had Suzanne Yockling working with us in the broadcast booth. Unfortunate because of a family health concern, she's not able to be here tonight, but uh, she told me before the competition, she believes that Gutierrez is really one of the keys to the success of the Alabama team. This is just a gymnast you can count on routine after routine to produce. Great tumbling, solid performance. Those big tumbling passes will pay off by the time of the championship part of the season, won't they? Absolutely. When you have all the top teams in the nation on the floor at the same time, a lot of gymnasts are doing these hard passes. You're gonna wanna do them and do them well Nailing the landing, that's how you win a championship. Jamie Pisani now, the score, unfortunately, for Scarlett Williams, a low 9-2-5. So the last two performers, once again, for the Razorback, will be Pisani and Grable. This is an event where her season average is quite a bit lower than her season high, which shows you one of two things, that it's an issue, something that really needs to be worked on, or an opportunity. If she can really get her consistency up to her highest level. The Crimson Tide solidly in the lead here. Remember at the top of the show, we mentioned that there's really two things going on here. One is a win-loss, and the other is a high RQS regional qualifying score. So even though it looks like Arkansas is not going to be able to hang with the Crimson Tide, they can still get a score that's going to help their standings and their chances of qualifying for, qualifying for the NCAA championship. And the score they want to drop is a 195.7, I think, and they, they will certainly do that, especially with this performance right here coming wow. back after the fall. Very nicely done. Gutierrez a 9.875. Geraldine Stack Eaton now. Let's see if she can recover from that uncharacteristic bobble on the balance beam. Competing in the all around in this competition. This is the event this where she snapped 
for on neck, her this pass and caused a concussion right here. just about three weeks ago. Let's see if she can handle it tonight. She just jarred herself on the landing. You could see she was really making certain she comes in under control. Good lead combination. I like the position she shows in the air. She's very precise. Reigning NCAA champion on this event. She can carry it. This had to have felt so good to her. Keeps very nice form. You could tell she kind of looked for the landing. Sure she did. definitely pulled her head forward a little bit. Just to make sure. Pike double back. Big moment for her. Great recovery after that bobble on the balance beam for Sherilyn Stack Eaton. Jamie Fasani had a 9.8. And as you can see, Renee Cook, the co-head coach at Arkansas, giving last minute pointers to their final performer on the beam, Catherine Grable, who's had a very good meet. Left on that arrow, walk over. Good combination going forward and then immediately backwards to the football player. Nice position in those splits. Oh, that's pretty. Get a 9825 on bars. 9925 on vault. And a 99 on four. Great meet for this young lady. And so far, this is excellent. A little long there, but we'll see why. Pike double back is oh, too bad. Yes. I, I admire I her for going for the difficulty, don't you? Absolutely. I'd like I would like to believe that you really get rewarded because unfortunately she took the step. Right. You have to take that deduction. But that is so much harder. You're right. The judges should have a tool which allows them to reward the gymnast who goes for the harder skill, even though they take a step. Exactly. We're going to fix that later. Okay, we will. Okay. <laughs> All right. Final performer. Gerilyn Stack Eaton, by the way, had a 9.95. Let's just sit back and enjoy Ashley Free. Thank <laughs> you. 
say she's seamless going from tumbling to dance, just like her teammate Gerilyn Stack Eaton. A total performance. By the way, the final score for Arkansas on the beam, Grable had a 9.85. Such great tumbling. I am so happy to see her back in competition. It had been difficult sitting out while your team wins a national championship, but to come back like this. <laughs> we do what we're trained to do, and we don't throw it out the window. Mark and Renee Cook. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Giving a few debrief suggestions to the Razorbacks. We'll wrap it all up when we come back to Tuscaloosa. Don't go away. Mr. Raji, we... Sarah Patterson is happy with her team. They scored higher than their season average on all four events tonight, getting the win for the Crimson Tide, 197-65 over Arkansas, 196-125. Kathy Johnson-Clark is down with head coach Sarah Patterson and one of the stars, Ashley Preetz. If a wow, so are we happy? What what were the best surprises in the whole competition for you? You know, I, I just think that the ladies did a great job. I told them to come out here and enjoy it. You know, it was a sold out arena, the power of pink, great women that we were sharing a cause with. And I think tonight was a celebration of a lot of things. Tell us about getting Gerilyn back in the lineup in all four events. How important is that? Well, you know, I think we're trying to build our depth, and Gerilyn struggled after the concussion down in Auburn, and I think just getting her confidence back and getting her back out there, and obviously she had some great scoring potential, and I thought our team, everybody juggled, we stepped in, and we had a great team score. I was going to say, you're still playing with your lineup. How close are you to that magical chemistry that you're looking for? You know, I think you wait to the end of the season till you find it. Right now, I'm trying to get people experience. Uh, Ashley Sledge was a little sore tonight, and I, I didn't want to risk it. Put Laura Lee in. Laura Lee scores 9-9. You know, I just think it's about building depth so that when it comes down the stretch, you're prepared for a championship. We'll talk about depth and leadership. Ashley, I mean, boy, did you make me smile. Can you put into words what it's like being back on the floor after missing the entire season last year? It's just such a blessing to be back out there and healthy, and I just praise God every time I'm out on the floor being able to compete again, and it's just a great feeling. Great seeing you. Best of luck for the rest of the season, both of you. And once again, Alabama gets the win, 197-65 over Arkansas, 196-125. Alabama, the Crimson Tide, remains undefeated. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Kathy Johnson-Clark, I'm Bar Connor.